This is Chef Matthew Cooper with Conifer, and we are at the downtown Bentonville Farmer's Market, and we're about to make a nice little amazing recipe for, for you all today, and uh, let's get it going. Hey, Matt. Hey, what's up? Hey, it looks like you've taken over our office. Absolutely, just like I normally do. Yeah, that's great. I heard a rumor that you were making me lunch. I am. Uh, I have. I just shopped through the market and saw some amazing, amazing humans and some amazing product, and I have put together kind of the quintessential what I think summer summer dish right now. So awesome! What is it? So we're gonna do a pounded out uh, chicken breast, a schnitzel with a tomato peach and uh, heirloom tomato salad with some local herbs. Awesome, well it looks like you hit some great vendors this morning. Oh yeah. Well, I'm gonna go back and check on the market and then once you're done, I'm coming up to have a bite. That sounds great, let's get right into it. Awesome. All right guys, so we are going to make a schnitzel today and we're gonna use some chicken that we got from the market. We're gonna, we're gonna pound that out and bread it and then we're gonna make a quick easy dressing and then we're gonna make a tomato, peach and heirloom tomato salad with some fresh herbs and some other things uh, to go right on top. So we're gonna, we're gonna get right in. So what we've got is we've got a nice chicken breast that we got from the market. Now, if it's too big, obviously, to what we're gonna do uh, in pounding it out, we will uh, do that. This one's a fairly large one, so this would be good for two portions. So we're gonna cut that and butterfly it really quickly. All right? Not cutting all the way through it. Kind of see how, how big you want that to do. We could go super big and actually, we might do that. You just gotta think about the size of your pan. So again, we've got uh, the chicken breast right here. We've got our little, you know, you can use whatever meat mallet or whatever you like. And we're just gonna, we're gonna pound that guy out a little bit. You start at the, at kind of the, the head of the breast and, and push your way back. And what you're looking for is just really to be even. Right, so that it cooks evenly, and things like that. And what's great about schnitzel, it's like chicken fried chicken, but it's like, it's really, you know, again, super huge, really big. So, and then what we've got right here, I've got some seasoned flour, right? And I've, so I've just normally, I've, I've got gluten-free flour here. So if you're celiac or gluten intolerant, you can do that as well. So that works out really good. And then I've got standard breading procedure, which is flour, egg wash, and uh, panko breadcrumbs, okay? And that really helps to seal in the moisture. Um, so most of you should be, most of you should, should be used to that. So, and you can use whatever you want to whisk up these eggs, whatever you really have lying around. And you can add a little bit of water, heavy cream if you like to give it a little bit more texture, but you don't have to for sure. All right, and then you're gonna go into the flour and dust it. that. Make sure it coats everything really good because you want to create the seal with the moisture. Make sure nothing like that. Again, then we go straight into the egg wash. Just like that. Super easy. This is super fun. You can like, you can do a, a lot of these at once and then even lay them out flat and freeze them so that you can have them for later because, you know, this is a little bit in, you know, labor intensive, you know. And that just makes it, it easier for you to pick it up later, do it when you want. And then we are going to just let that sit in the panko breadcrumbs and really, really uh, absorb all those to make sure everything's sealed really good. And then we're gonna make our dressing and wash our hands. I'm gonna make a really simple dressing. Okay, so let's get right into it. I do a three to one ratio of oil to vinegar in my dressings. Okay, and that's standard for everything. So this recipe is a base recipe that you can build upon time and time again and really get creative and have fun and not be too stressed out about the whole dressing thing, right? So I like mason jars because they've got these wonderful lines on them so you can know what you need to do. Like three to one makes it a little bit easier to do. Um, I'm gonna put all the liquid as far as the acid in first. So we've got our, our uh, apple cider vinegar. And then now I'm gonna do our, I'll put that over here for a sec. I'm gonna smash our garlic. You always get a little bit, you always need more garlic because you always have a little bit that runs away with, you know, runs away from you. Now, you can use this smash method. You want to get those, those cores off, get them out of the way. And then I'm using the, basically the knife as, as, a, as a mallet, okay? And then the, the blade is always going to be away from me. And then when I'm getting down, I'm moving the knife away from the garlic. So that gives this nice little minced, minced look. And you can come by and just, just chop it up. It can be rough chop, minced, whatever you like. 
I don't mind some some nice strong garlic kind of coming into coming into play in my dressings. Also, you can use a blender if you're really comfortable with a blender. That's great too. And you can use that to puree all your herbs to get that beautiful vibrant color, infuse that flavor even faster like a Vitamix. Most people have Vitamix, but this is a really simple, easy way to make a dressing really quickly. We're just going to put that in there like that. That's great. And then, so we've got our vinegar, our garlic, that's going to start to pull it out. We're going to go ahead and put about two tablespoons of our Dijon or brown mustard or whole grain, depending on what you want. So that's in there, right? And then we're going to grab some, just a little bit of herbs from our farmer's market. So we're going to do some basil. I love basil vinaigrettes. Now, what I'll tell you about these herbs is these these stems are really uh, chewable and edible. So I, I have a saying that says if it breaks, it eats. And that means as you're pulling these herbs apart, if the stem breaks off, try that. If that's tender, there's a lot of essential oils in there. There's a lot of flavor in those stems. So really be thinking about what, you know, what you can do to expand your knowledge on, on, on how you're using and how you're cooking, you know? And that's, so that's what I always do. So we're just gonna, we're gonna chop this up real quick. Or you could call it a chiffonade. Um, normally you'd lay all the leaves out together and then roll it up and chiffonade it. We're just gonna do a chop real quick. Just like that. Bring it back. And again, you can use your knife as kind of a shovel, always moving the blade away from you so that you're not gonna get into a cut, cut yourself scenario. That makes it not, not, as, not as fun, right? Like that. Wipe that off. All right, so we've got our herbs in there. Now I'm going to do a little bit more seasoning, a little bit more salt. Okay, so that's probably about a teaspoon. About a teaspoon of black pepper. All right, and then we've got our three times the amount of oil that goes in. That goes in last because you want, you kind of want the flavors to melt a little bit while you're doing the rest of that. And then the top just goes on. And then you just shake, 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 shake. Now what you want from the consistency of your dressings when we're doing this is you're going to want you're going to want what's called nappe consistency. And all that means is it's French for coats the back of a spoon, okay? And that's when you know you have the texture right. So you're going to have this great little see that? Isn't that great? Multiplication. You've got the garlic in there, the herbs. You want to taste it of course for seasoning. That's perfect. That's great. Just the amount of herbaceousness, salinity, acidity. Oh, it's going to go so great with these tomatoes and peaches and cucumbers that kind of bring that together. So it's okay to make this a little stronger. That's why I always make my vinaigrettes a little strong because everything else that I'm putting with it is going to bring that balance to the dish. Okay. All right. So let's, let's get right into the salad guys. So this is some great, uh, hydroponic arugula that we've got right here. We're just going to kind of roll that up and cut the end off. All right. So next we're going to take our tomatoes. I use a lot of this. I use a lot of the tomato. So the easiest way I found to cut these heirloom tomatoes, especially, and instead of trying to do the the scary, like I'm going to cut the core of the tomato out or slice it and lose a lot of tomato, I don't like to do that. I don't like to waste anything. So I'll quarter them, core going, and I'm cutting the core in the middle like that. So we've got all this right, and then you can just simply come through and just just straight cut the core just right out. Makes it super easy. Right, just like that. I'm gonna cut this into what I call an oblique, and that is a cut. It's a classical cut that allows you to take an organic thing and make this, the, the, the pieces relatively similar. And what I'm gonna do is that I've got that quarter of the tomato. Uh, now I've got an eight. I'm gonna cut, start, cut down in the center like this, and then I'm looking at the piece and how big it is, and then I just kind of cut it again. So I've got three kind of equal pieces. We're gonna do that with all of them, just like this. Again, I, with tomatoes, I just like to use a nice sharp chef's knife. If you're more comfortable with a serrated knife, that's fine too. You know, again, be comfortable. It'll make you more fun, have more fun, be more creative, things like that. Those are so great. You can see that as, as I'm cutting it, you'll notice when you have a when you have a sharp knife, you won't see all that moisture leak out. If you're ever wondering why you're cutting your herbs and they're turning brown or or the moisture's just leaking out, it's because your knife probably needs to be a little sharper. Okay. So again, we're putting that in there. All right. What's next? We're going straight for our peach and our nectarine, okay? So we've got our peach same. So with, with peaches and nectarines, sometimes you get really lucky and the peach just pulls straight off the pit. Sometimes you don't. So we're gonna see what these do. So again, I'm gonna start cutting it like an avocado. You're gonna be really careful though because you, sometimes you can go straight through that pit. So you wanna rotate it around the pit. 
All right, and then we're going to, nope, nope, not one of those. So if that happens, you're going to look down, you're going to see where that pit is, and you're going to kind of go around it just like you would a pineapple. If you hit it, just move your knife a little bit. All right, just like that. Try to get it in one fluid motion like that. That always helps. And then we're going to put that off to the side really quickly, and we're going to do our peach. Let's see if we get lucky with the peach. Probably won't, but we're going to try. Oh, we did. Look at that. Pulls right off the pit. Super easy. That one comes off too. And then we've got 100%. Don't have to worry about losing anything, which is great. And we're going to cut those this exact same way. We're doing we're doing this because like the, the flavor is different. Like, you know, the peaches are going to be a little softer right now. The nectarines are going to be a little uh, firmer texture and things like that. Less sweet. Again, all these things are important when we're building our vinaigrette. Pour it right over. I'm going to give it a quick shake, stir. And you just want to make sure it coats it really good. You can actually hear the salt in there, which is great. That's why we have a nice seasoned salad. Great. We've got our spoon here. I'm going to give it a little try. Mm -hmm. That's great, guys. You got the perfect balance of acidity and sweetness and everything out and so that's that's great you know what i forgot honey and that's okay because people make mistakes all the time that's fine so what we're going to do we're going to add a little bit of honey in that dressing okay i was like what's going on something's missing there we go you like making a mess too let's do that again there we go we're going to shake it up real quick perfect that's great. One more try. Yep, there it is. We can add a little bit more. That's fine. What's great about that arugula is that it holds up really well. You know, so we'll let this sit. We'll let this meld and get all wonderful while we're cooking our chicken, and then we will we will finish all this up. That's it. All right. Can we put this aside? Let's cook this chicken, and then we'll be ready. Hopefully, Stephanie will come back. We'll enjoy it. All right. All right. So we've got our we've got our pan. Uh, you can use a, a I use a normal saute pan. I like to use a really really good uh, nonstick just because it's easier. Or you can use a frying pan. But what we're going to do is a pan fry. Pan fry is where you're going to cover about half of the protein with oil, so that when you flip it over, you're going to cover at least just a touch more. Uh, and that way, we have even cooking through the top and bottom. We're going to start out with high heat to try to get that oil up to temperature, right? And then, and then we're going to bring it down as we need to. And the beauty about this is, is if we get to the color that we want on, on both sides before it's done, we'll just pop it in the oven real quick, okay? But we should be good. That's the great thing about schnitzel is that it cooks very quickly, okay? Um, so we've got our chicken right here. A good way to test the oil to make sure it's right is either a thermometer or you get that beautiful little sizzle that we just got, so that's great. Now, anytime you're going into a pan, hot oil, of, hot oil, you're going to start in the base like that at the closest to you and, and push away from you, okay, away from you. And that, that keeps you from getting splattered with hot oil and then allows you to have more control of the situation happening in the pan. And, and then we're just going to check it, right? We can see, okay, so that's getting, we'll turn it down again to a medium heat. We're just watching that. And see how the, see the oil doesn't completely cover the meat? We like that. It's going to cover it just enough to where it'll, when we flip it over, it's going to cover that and you won't have any part that's not cooked, right? And that's, that's exactly what we want. So that's the color we're looking for. So again, we're going to pick that up. We're going to lay it over gently, right? Get that nice golden color. Again, laying it away from ourselves to make sure. Now, if, you don't, if you're not comfortable with doing pan fries and things like that, that's an easy fix. Just get a bigger, just get a bigger pan with higher sides. That way you feel comfortable. We want, you want you to have fun with cooking. Um, and, and if not, then you just put a little bit of pan in the uh, oil in the pan and you can pan like saute that really quickly, get it brown, 
Do the same with the other side and then pop it in the oven at like 350, 375, um, depending on the strength of your oven. And then finish it that way if you're looking for a, you know, less, less fat intensive uh, meal. You know, so that's, that's super easy. You could even just spray it down with some really good organic um, cooking spray as well and bake it in the oven if you prefer that, if you have to stay away from a lot of fat. So the great thing about schnitzel is a street food. It's something that everyone can kind of relate to. It's got great texture. It's got that crunch. It's got the, the tenderness of the meat. Um, we could have gone a step further today and taken that chicken breast and brined it overnight in dill pickle brine. So the juice that everybody drinks, you could have done that and that would have tenderized the meat just a little bit more. So if you had time to do that um, the day before, so say on Sunday morning, you're shopping at the farmer's market on Saturday, then you have a little bit more time to prep. You could cut up all these vegetables and things like that, just not the herbs because you don't want them to bruise. And that way you have time to just pull some stuff together really quickly if you wanted to do a nice dinner, right? Because this is a this is a simple simple lunch or dinner, uh, but it's it's also really nice. So, and again, if you were doing these in large batches, do that again. So I always like to flip it one more time. You'll hear that moisture that's come up, and then that's a good sign that we're getting very close to being done. Again, if you wanted to, uh, you could stick a thermometer in here, check it. You're going to want it to be about 155 degrees to rest up to 160 because meat's a muscle and it's going to continue to cook as it's hot or if you just want to feel super safe you don't feel comfortable with chicken then just pull it at 160 degrees now remember though it will continue to cook okay so the best you can get it to that temperature mark you're going to have the most tender piece of uh, meat which is great and guys we are done that is great we've got golden brown on both sides just like that we're going to bring this guy up we're going to be careful again we're going to go straight to our plate Look at that, great. We're gonna turn the heat off. We're gonna remove the oil very gently away from the heat just to continue. And then we're gonna plate this dish and uh, hopefully Stephanie's gonna jump back by and get to eat it. So here we go. All right guys, so we've got our, our chickens all done. Our salad's all done. We're ready to finish this dish, get in and enjoy. Um, so here we go. Well, look at you, you showed up right on time. Yes, I did. Look at that. Oh, that looks beautiful. Yeah, so we've got local peaches, nectarines, tomatoes, Smells we've got amazing. some squash blossoms, a nice vinaigrette we made, we've got our chicken schnitzel. We're just gonna pile that up as high as we wanna go, just like that. We wanna make sure that we're getting some of the dressing as well, because that's so good with, that, with the fattiness of the chicken. And then there we go. Look at that, there's wow. your chicken schnitzel with Ooh. tomato peach salad and cucumber salad with uh, local from our Bentonville Farmer's Market. Guys, listen, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. We're gonna to be doing more of these segments. Go out there and support your local Farmer's Market, downtown Bentonville Farmer's Market, or wherever. Support your local farmers, because without those local farmers, there is no local food. And it's that's really important with, with everything we're doing. Come see me at Conifer, and thanks for letting me take over your kitchen. Today.